Hello everyone and thank you for choosing this module for your training needs. I'm Linda Batiste and I'm a Principal Consultant for the Job Accommodation Network, which we call JAN for short. For those of you who aren't familiar with JAN, we're funded by a contract from the U.S. Department of Labor Office of Disability Employment Policy. As our name indicates, we specialize in providing information about all aspects of job accommodations. We also provide information on the employment provisions of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA for short, and self-employment for people with disabilities. All of the information and services we provide are available free of charge. As a free national resource for information about the ADA and job accommodations, anyone can use our services, but we get most of our questions from employers and employees with disabilities. One of the frequent questions we get is what the ADA says about service animals and emotional support animals in the workplace. In our opinion, this is a confusing issue because there isn't anything specific in the ADA that addresses it. Unlike other parts of the ADA that deal with public access for service animals, the employment provisions of the ADA, called Title I, do not mention or define service or emotional support animals. Title II, which applies to state and local governments, and Title III, which applies to public accommodations such as stores and restaurants, have a specific definition of service animal and rules about members of the public having the right to use a service animal in public places. The definition of service animal for Titles II and III excludes emotional support animals, but that definition does not apply to employment issues under Title I of the ADA. Because there are no specific rules about service and emotional support animal access in the workplace, what should employers do? The general answer is that employers can follow their usual procedures for processing an accommodation request. In essence, a request from an employee to bring a service or emotional support animal to work is a request to modify a policy, typically a no animals in the workplace policy. In this module, we're going to provide some practical tips for conducting an ADA interactive accommodation process when an employee requests to bring a service or emotional support animal to work as an accommodation. For brevity, we're going to use the term service animal for the rest of the module, but the information applies to emotional support animals as well. The first step in the interactive process is the accommodation request. Typically, an employee asks if he can bring his service animal to work, but sometimes an employee will just show up with the service animal. In some cases, this is because employees, like many employers, are confused about the rules related to service animals in the workplace and believe they have an automatic right to use a service animal at work. When this happens, the employer needs to decide what to do. Allow the service animal temporarily while going through the interactive process or require the employee to take the service animal home. This decision will often depend on the specific situation. Step two in the interactive process is gathering the information that is needed to process the accommodation request. This can be done as an informal conversation with the employee or when the disability and need for accommodation are not obvious, an employer can require medical documentation. Documentation that shows an employee has a disability and related limitations typically comes from a healthcare professional. But what about documentation related to the service animal itself? In many cases, a healthcare provider won't be involved in the acquisition or training of a service animal, so can't provide documentation. When that's the case, documentation about the service animal may need to come from another source, such as the person who trained the service animal. Or sometimes, the best way to tell whether a service animal is appropriately trained to be in a work environment is to simply have the employee bring the service animal into the workplace for a demonstration. Step three in the interactive process is exploring accommodation options. Under the ADA, employers get to choose among effective accommodation options, so if an employer wants to explore other accommodations besides the service animal, the employer can do so. However, employers should keep in mind that a service animal may help with personal medical issues and provide support that other types of accommodations cannot provide, such as a sense of security. 
Step four in the interactive process is choosing an accommodation. As mentioned, it's the employer who gets to decide what accommodation will be implemented, but in many cases, allowing the employee to use a service animal at work will be the only fully effective option. When possible, employers should give preference to the employee's request to use the service animal. If an employer isn't sure whether having a service animal in the workplace will pose an undue hardship, one thing the employer can do is allow the employee to bring the service animal to work on a trial basis. That way, the employer can base its decision on facts and not speculation. Step five in the interactive process is implementing the accommodation. This is when the employer and employee need to talk about the specifics of having a service animal in the workplace. In general, an employee can be expected to be responsible for the behavior and care of the service animal and for cleaning up after it, but may need accommodations in order to do so. For example, are there places the service animal isn't allowed? If so, where will it stay if the employee must go to those places? How often does the service animal need to relieve itself and where will it relieve itself? Will the employee's current break schedule be sufficient time for the employee to care for the service animal's needs? And what about educating coworkers? When a service animal is working, coworkers should not try to pet it or interact with it. However, ADA confidentiality rules state that employers cannot tell coworkers about an employee's disability or accommodations. So how will coworkers learn about proper service animal etiquette? An employer should start with the employee who will be using the service animal and ask how he would like to handle coworker education. If the employee does not want to educate coworkers, then the employer may just want to let coworkers know that there will be a dog in the workplace and they are not to interact with it. And what if a coworker is afraid of or allergic to the service animal? Employers should not automatically deny the request to have the service animal at work as there may be things the employer can do to accommodate both employees. For example, the employees might work different schedules or work in separate parts of the building. There are cleaning methods for removing pet dander and those could be used frequently. One employee may be able to, and prefer to, work from home or another location. And remember, Jan is available to brainstorm accommodation ideas when needed. The final step in the accommodation process is monitoring the accommodation to make sure it continues to be effective. The easiest way to do this is to keep the lines of communication open. Check in with the employee periodically to make sure the accommodation continues to be effective and encourage the employee to report any problems. And that completes our training. We hope you find it helpful. In case you need more information, visit our service animal page at https colon forward slash forward slash askjan.org forward slash topics forward slash s-e-r-v-a-n-i-m dot c-f-m and you can always contact us at Jan. You can reach us toll free at 800-526-7234 for voice or 877-781 9403 for TTY or visit us on the web at askjan.org. We hope to talk to you soon and again thank you for making Jan a part of your training program.